record. Getting to visit Antarctica at all was special, but the option to snorkel while down there was an extra level of adventure. Before I get into it, FYI that I did make another video about the overall visit if you want to check out that one first. But basically, we lived on a ship, the Greg Mortimer with Aurora Expeditions, for a little over a week where the passengers went on two excursions a day to whatever sites the leaders decided to visit, either ashore or just cruising around in Zodiacs. But we also had the option beforehand to supplement the experience by signing up for either sea kayaking or snorkeling, not both. Uh, we didn't know exactly what to expect with this, but despite the literal ice water we knew we'd be swimming in, we signed up for snorkeling. This ended up working out so well for a bunch of reasons. Uh, the first was just the logistics of the operation. It's so cold, uh, usually a few degrees below freezing, that you can only stay in the water for like 30 or 45 minutes, and the excursions were usually a few hours long. So we ended up getting to experience whatever the normal excursion was first, and then duck out a little early to also go snorkeling for the last section, getting the best of both worlds and not really missing out on anything. Plus, our group had the most involved prep of anyone, as we needed to wear these airtight dry suits with as many layers of clothing on under them as possible. So we would always start dressing up first of anyone, and consequently leave the ship first too, um, getting a bit of extra time out there with the penguins or whatever. It was sometimes just us at the landing sites for a while, which made them feel even more special. Actually, in the water, there's a few different types of things to do and see. First off, as you might expect, there's plenty of ice, and swimming around with it is a novel experience. At the beginning, we weren't crazy about wearing the dry suits constantly, as they're bulky and aren't the most comfortable, but they do look kind of awesome, and they're definitely needed. Um, the seals are at the wrists and neck, and we'd be like spraying lubricant in there to get them on every time. <laughs> then when you're actually going in the water, you add thick wetsuit hood and gloves, and your mask and snorkel. Your lips and cheeks are kind of just sacrificed. Um, it's so cold that it's basically just like a painful stinging on your lips until they eventually go numb. Though the dry suits are so buoyant that you can easily keep your head out of the water when you want. We can't swim near the giant iceberg since they can injure us from stuff breaking off above or below, but even the small ones let us see in person how 90% of the ice is below the water, and some rare ones are very clear, which is odd to interact with under the water. At the right angle, it's almost invisible. We grabbed some one day and brought it back to make drinks with later, of course. But the thing we wanted to see most was the wildlife. Uh, when you're in a shallow area, there are plants and animals to see, even in the frigid water. Most of the bigger animals eat krill as a main part of their diet, so there was a lot of that, of varying sizes, teeny tiny ones, up to bigger things that look kind of like shrimp, but uh, we did also see at least one actual fish. Maybe the neatest surprise we got was this jellyfish. Even in the daylight, it had visible, moving, colored light running up and down its sides. It's the kind of thing I always thought cameras exaggerated, but this is fully visible to the naked eye, just as you see it. 
We saw five different types of seals on this trip, but by far the most numerous were fur seals, especially while snorkeling. You would not want to swim with an elephant or leopard seal. You can see how suited these animals are for the environment if you look closely there. They're literally steaming as they lie on the rocks. Um, the fur seals were often sleeping or fighting just on the rocks near us. Some showed some interest in checking us out too. Uh, one even swam right up to us to say hi. But the stars of the experience were penguins, uh, since what else would you think of first with Antarctica? Multiple species of them too, of course, uh, and we found them to mostly not mind us much, though we did have to kind of remain calm and let them decide if they wanted to approach. Uh, at one spot near a colony, we hung out in the bay while some came and went, and a few decided to check us out on their way. The craziest thing that happened on the whole trip was the series of events on the third day. While we were on land visiting a colony, Thomas and Stas were cruising around looking for a cool snorkel spot and found an area with just hundreds of penguins going around in circles. Um, they brought us out there and we're freaking out a little because we're trying to get in the water, but we need to not scare them. Uh, gotta let them come to us. And eventually the pack was moving towards us, so we slipped in and ended up just surrounded by them in the water as they moved around us the exact opposite of on land. They seem to fly, um, and I didn't speed any of this up. When they want to, they're like little torpedoes, super fast and able to change direction on the spot. We think they found a dense spot of krill or something because as we were wrapping up our snorkel, I think it was Thomas in the water that was suddenly like, I hear a whale. Um, and then Stas on the boat is like, I see it, but it's way over there. So we're climbing onto the Zodiac and suddenly a minute later or whatever, it must have been coming right to us because the freaking thing surfaces right next to us, basically in the pack of penguins. Um, of course, I'm trying to video it and get underwater on the GoPro and just see one fin because the visibility isn't quite good enough, but not only was it right there, it showed off its tail a couple times while swimming around. Eventually, after five minutes or so, it moved away. Um, we just started leaving on the Zodiac and we hear this huge cracking rumbling of some massive amount of ice breaking off somewhere. And usually when that happens, it was echoing from somewhere or hidden behind something, whatever. But we turn around and it's one of the icebergs directly in our line of sight and on the way back to the ship. Whoa! Oh my God! <laughs> kind of get a sense of the scale from how slowly everything seems to move in this video. It was a huge iceberg and we drove through the resulting spreading debris field a bit on our way back. Um, this whole series of events was nuts and so lucky. Penguins, whale, iceberg calving all in a row within a few minutes of each other. Another big advantage we had was that the snorkel guides are specific people that we worked with the whole trip. Thomas and Stas had tons of experience and their enthusiasm for their work helped make it a fun time for our group which by the way, consisted of only me, my sister, our parents, and one other man, Robert. That's a small group to get two guides entirely to ourselves, so we were quite lucky. Um, and we had a dedicated Zodiac and could basically decide how we wanted to divide up our time. An extremely personalized experience, um, and we felt like friends by the end of it. The rest of the ship had their own schedules while the snork squad did our own thing, led by the whiteboard process telling us when to go get ready twice a day, rain or shine. Outside the wildlife, we did also get to see some leftover evidence of humans from around 100 years ago at Enterprise Island. Uh, it was a whaling hotspot, and we saw some old ship mooring posts, decaying wooden boats, and even found an area to snorkel with dumped whale bones. But the main attraction was the wreck of a large old whaling factory ship. Um, others checked it out in their Zodiacs, but we actually swam up near and over it to check out the pieces both above and below the waterline. You can see how the ocean is just eating holes right through it. And 
and another day they sent out what was codenamed on the radios as the Special Zodiac, equipped with hot chocolate and booze, which we enjoyed while actually in the water just for kicks. Fun, unique experience. Whiskey neat. No, not hot chocolate. Yes. In the end, it almost felt like we were on a different trip than everybody else. Um, it took a lot out of us physically, though. I was eating tons and still lost weight. Putting the suit on and off twice a day, hiking around, swimming. I, I don't think I was ever fully, really warm all week, but it also felt like we were getting twice as much done. I loved the efficiency. And underscoring the differences point, they asked me to actually put together some of my footage and present it to the rest of the ship at the end. Um, basically this video, version 1.0, I ended up giving a little 10 minute or so recap up at the podium of what snorkeling was like, like one of the little expedition lectures, which of course did not hurt my ego one bit, uh, and I definitely enjoyed doing it. We'll see in a second how fast they can be, and so I know this guy's curious because he's being so slow in the water. Um, very good, very good. This was one of our best trips ever. Um, thanks again to Thomas and Stas and Aurora overall. If you haven't checked out my video of everything else about the trip, all the non-snorkeling stuff, make sure to do so next. I'll link it. Thanks for watching and please subscribe if you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm.